if you're the CEO of British Airways, how do you go into a boardroom and say, no, we're not going to screw the employees. We're going to double down and we're going to take good care of the people that we still need. How do you say that in a boardroom? You have to have balls. <laughs> that's a, that's a r ridiculous. I, you, you probably remember from a few minutes ago, I talked about the company where I introduced the Susan Kane stuff. And I remember talking to the CEO, and this was, it was electronic components, and I think it was about a $3 billion company. And he said, when I talk to my board members, I tell them that if they want a 50% increase in profits in the next 18 months, I know exactly how to give it to them. He said, unfortunately for them, they'll have to get rid of me because I'm not going to do it. Uh, and, you know, I worked for McKinsey for years, and it has gotten a bad rep in the last couple of years for, unfortunately, very good reasons. Uh, but the thing that nauseated me most was a guy, I don't remember his name, but he headed one of the pharmaceutical companies, and he really misbehaved. But there was a practice, a consulting practice at McKinsey that was informally called buy and cut. You buy a firm, you get rid of 30% of its employees, and you are guaranteed to have 36 months of increased profitability before the whole damn thing implodes. And, you know, that literally, literally makes me nauseated. I, I, I will say... Uh, I really want to turn you guys on to the people who run the Drucker Institute down in uh, over in Claremont in uh, in the L.A. area, uh, and you know they they really are going after this shareholder value maximization stuff. But there is extraordinary research done by McKinsey that says the long term investments pay off in dollar numbers that are uneffing believable you just don't get it the first year and i don't you know there's we both know neither you know i was born many more yesterdays before than you were but we both know having not born yesterday that if that ceo does have the guts and does have the nerve and is willing to retire and is willing to give up his frigging stock options and is willing to not take his $30 million home, he can do it, or she can do it. Uh, and, and, it and it, you know, and I'm trying to be totally focused on women, but being an old boy, it takes balls. It takes guts. It takes, you know, I don't get it. I just don't get why having... $75 million in the bank is not enough for you, and you need another 25 from your stock options. I don't understand these people as human beings. I just never want, I said to somebody, and you know, Jamie Dimon, partially because he's probably physically attractive and has a nice smile, I would love to be in a meeting and be introduced to Jamie Dimon and have the pleasure of being unwilling to shake his hand. <laughs> You know, he, he had $40 billion in fines for screwing up during that crisis in 2007, and we still treat him like an adult. I don't know what, you know, the old too big to jail. Uh, I don't know whether you ought to be in jail or not, but no living human being should ever have to have COVID or no COVID to have your hand infected by his hand. I, I did once achieve my dream in that regard, and it was uh, when I was teaching at Stanford and they had an advisory board meeting, and Robert McNamara was on the advisory board, and I had spent two years in Vietnam, and so I had the great privilege of being introduced to him and not shaking his hand. You know, you don't, you don't get many opportunities like wow. that. In life. Served no, practi no practical purpose at all, but <laughs> it, it, I... I I'm, I'm I'm terribly sorry we get you to this dark dark place. Um, <laughs> well, you I'm, have. Well, well I'm I mean, sorry. I, I, question I, about why I, the CEO doesn't have the nerve to 